Hi. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Or as we used to say when I was like 12, happy Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Um, sorry, we're just a snurch late. It's only because um, Mr. Judy Tenuta, I think, is joining us tonight. Um, but he was having some problems connecting. So we were kind of going back and forth a little bit. And uh, I don't know where. I don't know where that sits. I don't know where that sits. What's I, the sitting? What's I don't sitting? I, I, don't, I don't know where that sits. What do you think so about not sitting? What do you think about today's uh, show? It it was it's the worst show I've ever heard. Unfortunately, it's going to be the best show I've ever heard. Well, that's or, the, uh, yeah for the future. That that is such a great quote. Tis it is a great quote. It, Hold on, I think that Mr. Judy is is with us. Hang on a second. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Yes. Yeah. I don't. I want, uh, I I hid my sorry. How do I hide my picture? This is stupid. Let me okay, see. So you just have like some weird edit avatar. Edit avatar. Yes. Give me one that. second. Yes. Yeah, oh. Just take your time. Sorry, guys. That's okay. So Mr. here. It is joining us tonight, and yes, X and Arm are running late. They're so late that they may not even show up. How about that? I wore my Harry Carey glasses because I thought they were so fun. I, I still can't stop laughing about that. I can't remember who in the chat said that, but it makes me laugh so hard that I had to. Um, there's this woman named um, Iris Apfel, I think is her name, and she also wears like these gigantic fucking glasses. But that's what I had handy when I was, you know, putting on my shirt for tonight, you know, to just be a little sparkly and whatever, whatever, whatever. You know what? Yeah, I, I I don't care about what anybody says in the comments. Mm. So what I'm having tonight, Dennis is going to show you what he's having tonight as well. But what I'm having tonight is called Sipping Chocolate from Trader Joe's. And you add like three teaspoons of super hardcore chocolate to um, like three quarters of a cup of milk. And uh, it's just for sipping. But you know what? It's like more milk. It makes me go to sleep. Nothing makes me happier. That's all I got. Dennis, well, I um I have a wonderful drink here. It's um coconut rum with uh coconut uh pure uh, puree or um actually what's coconut pink, cream. Though? I guess what's coconut cream would be called. Pink? What? What's the pink in that? Well, the pink is grenadine to to make it to make it festive. Now, did you frost that? It ended up. I used uh, lime what? seltzer as my mixer. Yeah, and it the cream of coconut and the lime seltzer made it froth. It gave it a great effect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's very exciting. Kind of looks like a fun, cute Shirley Temple ish type of drink. Like there should be cherries in it and all sorts of other goodies. It should, be. should be. Should be. Should be. It's quite. It's quite good though. Just so you know, in the background, Mr. Judy is still trying to get his shit together. Um, I don't drink I daily. I have not drank all day today. You know, I, I stopped drinking um, daily. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, you know what it is? It's like I was having I was having uh, just a snurch of like liver issues about two years ago. As you know, Dennis, I told you this. I shared I that I was having like some <sighs> cholesterol and liver things going on. And that's when I stopped really drinking every night. I mean, I, I love, I love, I love my wine. I love a good drink. I'm all for it, but yeah, whatever. So I see Mr. Judy says devices still not connected. So if you can hear me, just uh, take your time and fix your, oh, there you go. You there? Hey, everybody. There you are, Mr. Judy. Everybody seems to have. Echo. Yeah. Is that my fault? Quite. No, it's not. <laughs> okay. Let me kick uh let me kick this one. Kick that guest. All right. Tell me if that's better because he was on no. two times. No. How about if I leave the studio and come back? Don't know. No. It's usually me. Okay. Are we better now? Oh yes, we're much better now. I feel so good now. People of Earth, how are you? <laughs> We'll get this right one year. 
Oh no! Well, I mean, we just came. We just we just turned everything on like two minutes before we actually came on. So you know, that's how it works. You guys are seeing how the uh, made. Oh my god! Oh. Oh. Back. How's that? Yeah. So they yeah. go. Oh. Game. Hey. Stop, stop, just let it go. Just let it go. I don't hear the <laughs> echo at all. I don't even care. Does anybody, anybody else, else there? there? Like echo. echo. No, nobody says everybody says they don't hear it. No they sound like my, my mic's mic underwater, underwater, which, which it isn't. isn't. You know what? I have to blame you. Dennis. Mine is. Why? I Why? Touch anything because I don't I don't even come. I, here I, I have I not, have not doing a show. touched anything, anything, anything just yesterday. yesterday. I don't believe you. I don't okay, believe you. I, I, I have not. Oh, you do this DJs. Classic DJ music hits of the seventies and eighties <laughs> things. Yes, yes. And um, and yeah, yeah. I know Apple sucks. I know. I'm the only one. I, 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 can't, I, I can't, can't, can't hear, hear you. you. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not, not kidding. kidding. Do, do, do you want to kick me out, out and, and, and no, bring, bring me back? back? No, no. Okay. okay. My, God, God, is that, is that you? you? <laughs> what are what they are saying? saying? Dennis, I hate you so much. <laughs> Why don't you bow out and come back? I'll see you. I'm going to go out back. Bye. 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 Okay. Okay. Bye. Can I still hear me? Fuck. It was fine when Monique was out. <laughs> Coach, how? I don't know what's going on. You know what? I don't touch this machine at all when I'm not doing the show. Like at all. Hello. He doesn't touch the machine. But she, she said, said. <laughs> uh, this is so funny. It's my fault. I have to admit. It's uh, in it's the loop, loop back. back. <laughs> it's in the loop back. Let's see what's going on. Uh, Mo's volume is low. Yeah, yeah I can barely hear, hear you. All right, how's this? A little better. Still can't, still can't hear, hear you. Hear you. Really? Nope, nope. Right, hold on. Hang on. Please hold. How's this? Testing one, two, three. You're still, You're still low, low. Testing one, two, three. My echo's, My echo's still still louder, louder than, you. than you. Testing one, two, three. Mm. I don't know what to tell you. I'm really loud in my ears. And really I, I loud. hear Let me nothing, see. nothing. Let me see. Audacity. Brave browser. Testing one, two, three. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Here, let me try this. Testing one, two, three. How's this? How's this? No, no. What? No? I still sound low? You still, you sound, still the sound the same. same. You haven't changed. You haven't changed. One, one ounce. ounce. Oh, God damn you. All right. Let me let me add him. Let me hi, leave. Hi. I'm leaving. I'm, I'm out. <laughs> How do we sound now? You sound Good. better. I, yeah, I don't, hear, I don't hear three of you. It's okay. Uh, and I only hear one of me. <laughs> <laughs> Frank the Tank, my my mic got a whiff of the drink and is now drunk. Possibly, this is pretty strong. Um. <laughs> you know whatever, whatever it is, oh, oh. I don't care. How about that? All right, All right. Let's, let's keep on keep going. On going. I'll, I'll be completely, completely disturbed, disturbed by this. By this. <laughs> what? What are you disturbed by? The, the echo, echo that's that's in my head. head. It, it... Echo. echo. The voice, the voice is, is my head. head now competition. competition. Oh, I wish Bond was here. He would fix it for us. <laughs> But, but it's tomorrow, tomorrow already. already. How, How can, can you do, do that? that? Yeah, but he's up now. It's it's early yet late. We are having weird audio issues. Issues. Can you come in, please? Okay. Whatever it is, Dennis, I can't. I can't. You can't? can't? I can't. All right. It's All right, better. better. I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll lie. better. better. <laughs> yeah, just let it go. I'll let, I'll it, let go. it go. Hello. Hello. Just let it go. Yes, all is good when Monique is off. R oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I am begging you to stop listening to our show. You are just the worst, worst commenter. Me? me? Everybody says that it's fixed now that Mo left. So I guess it's me. Whatever. Can but you call Scott? Scott? You, <laughs> but you can have to do <laughs> what you do. do. I have all the clips and that's all I can say. So there you go. Okay, so welcome to our uh, hello. hello. Sitting in as a little guest is Mr. Judy Tenuta, who some of you may know from the deafening because he tends to stop it. Dennis, stop it! I will boot you from this fucking thing <laughs> right now if you don't stop that. Okay. okay, just make believe it's not happening. Okay, just make believe. You know, show must go on. We just do whatever we have just to turn do. Turn your mic up a bit. 
Oh my God! Really? Yes. Yes. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, no. It's so <laughs> loud. It's so loud in my ears. It's not even funny. Hello. Hello. Let me see. I can't. Even, let me see. Testing. Testing. No, that's horrible. Testing. 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 There we testing. go. Testing. That's awesome. awesome. Oh fuck off! All right, here we go. Start of the show. <laughs> Do you remember what you remember what you figured last last time? I don't do anything. I don't touch this computer unless I'm on this stupid show. Like I don't touch it. Dennis, however, Dennis I, does I his own thing computers. for yesterday. DJ Jazzy Jam and the <laughs> classic garage <laughs> Mopar men. So you know, I'm not the one touching is, anything. Is, would, would it be, would it be a mistake, mistake to resend, resend the, link? the link? No, no, it doesn't matter. See, music stream is saying Mo's volume is too low and Dennis is too loud and echoes like Edge's guitar. Wow. Okay. Edge's, edges guitar. I can't believe you threw Edge into this. That's really not nice. That's a pretty, That's a pretty good, good. <laughs> nice, nice mix. mix. And I haven't done anything. So, okay, I let me shove it either. closer to my freaking pie hole. Um, yeah, I'm not doing anything. I don't really care. How about that? How about that? How about that? We're going to start the show now. You ready? Sure. You ready we're now? 11, 12 minutes in, we're going to start the show now. Here we go. Let's let's try. New let's record. try and start all over again. Okay? Here we go. Ready? Hello. Hello. Greetings, Hello. everyone. Welcome to Wednesday, February 14th. Happy Valentine's Day to everybody out there, all you lovers. All you lovers. Um, yeah, it's uh, Valentine's Day, and we have a show to get to tonight where Billy Joel was the master of ceremonies. And um, shockingly enough, I didn't really tape any of the Billy Joel until Beth came in. Uh, what are you drinking now? Dennis, I thought you water, were drinking water. a pink... Just, just water. water. Oh, you have yeah, two. Yeah, I... You have two sources of, of <laughs> hydration <laughs> right now. Absolutely. <laughs> Gotta stay hydrated. Um. Yes. So I'm happy to spend my Valentine's Day with my favorite favorite people, and I am happy that you are here with me at 8:30 at night. You know what else do we have to do? Uh, to me, Valentine's Day is like the St. Patrick's Day Parade or the Puerto Rican Day Parade days. You know, it's when the pikers go out. Uh, you know, every day should be Valentine's it's a, Day. It's, it's a, a Hallmark, Hallmark holiday. holiday. It's a Hallmark holiday. Because yeah, the, real the real Saint, Saint, uh, Saint Valentine, Valentine um, was, was marrying, marrying people, people in secret, secret and then he was, he was killed because, because he, did, he that. did that. Wait, so, you know, you know, know. story? That's the real story. story. Well, what do you mean? He, he married he was, people in uh, secret. What does that mean? A priest in the early days of the Catholic Church. And, and he, he um, um, was secretly, secretly marrying, marrying people in the Catholic, Catholic ceremony, ceremony, and the uh, Romans, Romans found, found out, out, and, well, you know, he killed, killed him. Mm. Nice, okay. nice, nice, romantic. romantic. Okay, well, tough shit. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I'll never forget this like really cute boy that I used to really, really like, but he wasn't really my type, and he came and rang my bell, and um, yeah, ran down the stairs, and he had this big stuffed like poodle from like Dwayne Reed or CVS or something and he's like I just wanted to wish you a happy Valentine's Day and I still feel bad to this day that I I accepted the gift graciously but then the next day I was such a brutal brutal sea monkey about I cannot believe that Matthew gave me this um poodle <laughs> like what was he thinking you know, it was just so silly. I I don't even know how old I was. I was probably like twelve or thirteen, and I was a total douchebag. And no, yeah, no, no, I was. It was kind of it was kind of horrible. I just remember that. So Matthew, if you're out there, I'm really really sorry I did that to you. And you were still really really cute when you grew up too. So 
you know, there's that. All right, let's start the show. Mr. Judy Tenuta is with us tonight. He is uh, sitting in for both Arm and Xavier, which is, you know, uh, 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 those, are those are big, big shoes. shoes. Those are big shoes to fill there, sir. So I'm not sure sure you're not going to talk in like a squeaky uh, cat voice or give us any kind of historical reference on Howard that we don't know. So, when, when, when I, I thought just, just uh, arm, arm, I mean, uh, X wasn't going to was, was sorry. sorry. <laughs> Just when, when I, I, I thought, thought Armand was going to be there, there, I was like, like Armand's the man, not taking over for him. him. But, no, it's just uh, nice to have another there. voice. Oh, it's just nice yeah. to have another voice. And you should all know, uh, fun fact, m- me and Mr. Jude Tenuta are um, really... Can you interrupt for a second? Rock, second? Hmm? Kevin, Kevin Hoskins, Hoskins needs to go, go fucking bye-bye. Bye. Who? A Kevin, Kevin Hoskins is bad. The fucker, fucker needs, needs to go away. All right? Oh, all right. I feel like this is like a... You won't read my comments. comments so I'm, I'm not I'm, reading I'm comments. Gone. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm not really reading them. Um, yeah. Okay. He's gone. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Anything from my friends. Uh, but yeah, fun fact, me and Mr. Jude Tenuta are actually good friends and um, I adore him more, oh, than, I adore you too. more than pretty much anybody else that's um not affiliated with this show i i would consider him a friend i i you know i pass him ideas on things that i'm doing in my house and we share art with each other and you know he's a student of art so i appreciate his uh input wow. on on many things so yeah did you do the plan for your uh Huh? For your, 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 your kitchen, kitchen so to help, help just touch the mom up. He has seen my kitchen. He has seen all my stuff that I'm doing. Good, good. He's um yeah, I I, I show him th- like my little rugs that I'm making and my stupid shit that I do. Um yeah, okay, so people are saying only Monique isn't echoing. Mm-hmm. Oh so gosh, that's great. Because uh, I can't, I can't hear, myself. hear myself. Oh, you're kidding. Okay, There's so much echoing. Yeah. Is it really bad? Okay, so you know what I'm gonna do. Okay, we're just sorry, guys. I know there's like a bunch of people listening to us. And um, what I'm going to suggest, Dennis, you too, is that we all boot ourselves out and just restart. Okay. 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 All right. That's all we're going to do. So we'll see you in a little bit.
Hello. Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing just fine. <laughs> I'm just I'm just peachy keen. Am I still echoing? No, everything sounds great now. It's outstanding. Just... Yahoo chat rooms. <laughs> yeah, not that level now. This is great. <laughs> you know, the funniest thing about this is that we have literally been doing a uh, podcast for eight years. <laughs> oh, that's all. <laughs> the equipment's gotten a lot better. The equipment has gotten better, but for some inexplicable, bizarre reason, the sound has not. All right, hang on. I'm transferring uh, clips now back into VLC Media Player. Sing it. So oh, that sounds beautiful. Do that real quick. So that all the clips are here. Because every show is like the first show. Every show is like every that. show is like the first show. All right. Oh my goodness. Oh, okay. So all of my stuff stayed uh, on the link. All right, we're gonna start the show. Mr. Jude Tenuta will come back in at some point at some point, and then we'll figure it out. All right, we're gonna start. Here's the start of the show. So I, I didn't I didn't record this because I thought it was kind of bizarre, but he started the show with Billy Joel version of Great American Nightmare. And I'm not even sure who was singing. Pretty sure it I wasn't. It, so thank God. Billy. Oh, here's Mr. Judy. Hi, you there? Hey. Okay. Is it I think better. I think so. I think. Oh, Starting the show. Disaster. <laughs> Disaster. Well, singing. Uh, starting off the show with a little bit of a uh, Billy Zombie. Billy, what would it be like if Billy sang Rob Zombie? Before the mafia. All right. Well, very exciting day today. I'm here in the Miami studios and waiting on Billy Joel, but that's not going to be for a while. You gotta, you gotta hang in there. Okay. And I got a big Steinway and Sons piano here for him in case he might want to tinkle. I mean, I'm going to tinkle, but that's back in the green room. So here's the thing I'm not understanding about the whole Billy Joel Howard Stern thing. Yes. Clearly, as we will grasp from the clips that I'll play later on in the show, his uh, wife and Beth are friendly. They get together for dinner, mm -hmm. both in Palm Beach and in the Hamptons. They're social together. Uh, Billy has donated an inordinate amount of money to Beefus's very friends, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. Um, so how is it that he could have thousands of questions to this man, hundreds of things that he needs to ask him. Is it that he considers him to be a friend and not somebody who just kind of supports him because he's Howard Stern, who's very wealthy and lives close by, or is it that he, um, he just doesn't want to ask him questions that he thinks would be stupid when it's not saved for the radio. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all of that yes 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 uh no it, it, it remember the, he he has to do his color by numbers interview so the whole color by numbers interview can't be a normal conversation it needs to basically be running your wikipedia page and asking questions based on that not having a true conversation with the person you're looking at that is why it's both because it, it it literally he is he's just doing things that he thinks makes a good interview because he's a terrible interviewer and he thinks that makes it good. But it, Mo, you're saying why he doesn't ask him anything in private life? Uh, yeah. He doesn't know any albums. He knows no songs. He's never seen him live. I mean, he, he knows nothing. That's true. That's true. He doesn't know anything. He 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 doesn't know anything. If he didn't have John Hine in the background helping him out with with lyrics which are ridiculous and stupid and so inane at this point, you know, uh, Billy Joel. And I know we had this conversation the other day, and you know, people were talking about uh, how Billy Joel is like iconic and whatever, but he's overplayed. He is. Yes. He's incredibly overplayed. He hasn't had new music in over thirty years. He's overplayed, and. And the fact that he doesn't know the lyrics to pretty much every famous Billy Joel song is shocking to me. He doesn't know the lyrics to his own song. 
Well, that's true. <laughs> I mean, so what's not? What's, 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 I mean, he's a sixty-nine IQ. I mean, it's not very hard for him to not know anything. But I mean, true. him trying to look deeply at seventy years old, look deeply into lyrics of songs that have been out longer than most people. You know, most 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 people have been alive because, like, people under forty five. Yeah, for sure. No, but though for sure, even even in our age range, for sure, like his early music was not something I knew about until that one album came out that was like really uh, seminal for him with moving out and all that stuff on it. Like, I, like I, Second, I I don't even know what it. I don't even know the, the street title. I don't know nothing about 50 it. Fifty Second Street or the Street. Fifty Second yeah. Street. I knew it was one of the streets. One of those. One of those. But like a hundred years, we're old enough that, you know, he never knew anything about Twisted Sister. He never knew anything about Bon Jovi. He never knew anything about Leslie West. Like, it's just, he doesn't know anything about music. Babe, he never knew anything about Depeche Mode. I bring that up time and time again. I, it, it shocks me to know that he doesn't know, like, The Cure, The Smiths, Depeche Mode. Like, he missed out on the entirety of the early 80s somehow. I, I don't know how. I, well, that's because he was listening to The Bread and, to bread and Carp, the Carpenters. <laughs> America. And America. I mean, he really, he was he was so not rock and roll. It's I mean, it's honest it's to God, he is not. He really isn't. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you could tell by the way he talks about, you know, the, just the bands. They're just the biggest popular bands from whatever time frame. So it's not, you know, like I've never heard him mention once motor, uh, Motorhead. Once, never once, and it's a band that basically spawned most of American metal, and he not once he talked about that. But he doesn't know metal music. No, he, he doesn't. Knows, he doesn't know anything. Ozzy Osbourne because he was on a show. Like he, <laughs> he knows Mountain because the dude was on a show. Like he doesn't really know music at all. No, he's really the fact that we have to rely on fucking empty. John Hine to be the arbiter of what is important in music is shocking to me. How long was he actually DJ that dropped the needle on a, on a record? I don't think he ever dropped a needle. He did, no, he, he did. Up dropped through, a needle though? Dropped a needle. Well, I'll throw up through WNBC. He played music because he had to play music. There was music in the afternoons at K-Rock. Um, and then it stopped when he went to mornings, it stopped. But was it curated music already done for him? Because that's what WNBC was at that point. Yeah. He, he gets a list anything. of what he, to play. No, he never Sorry. Yeah. Right, he gets a list of what to play. It's all like right. top 25 music. And so after they did traffic and weather, he would go to music and he would, he would talk up the first song and then it would go into the next and the next and the next and the next. So he just played music. He had no idea what he was playing. He didn't oh no, no, no! He, he he really because he he cites stuff that he, they were playing at WNBC was that was not music they were playing at WNBC. WNBC was playing like really soft rock. I mean, it was not, and you know, it was really not playing anything cutting edge because it's NBC. Yes. So, yeah. So he was he, he brings up music, and I'm like, no, you weren't playing that there. Because uh, I I remember that I remember you on there and it was really bland music. Yeah, I don't remember him on NBC at all. Like I, yeah. I didn't listen to AM music unless I was in the car with my parents or something, and and that was like rare. You, you didn't like that mono. You didn't like that mono sound. <laughs> Not that I didn't like it. It's just that you know, since we lived in Brooklyn, we took the train everywhere, so mm. being in the car wasn't something that you did. And as I got older, when I could listen to music. It was literally going on the roof and trying to get WLIR, which was uh, New Wave and and shit like that. So prior to that, I literally just remember bands like we were just talking about, Bread and America and you mm -hmm. know, No Name and all that shit being on the, oh. the radio whilst we were going to Jones Beach or something like that. Oh, God. Yeah, so I don't really, it's not really formative in my brain. And my, my mom listened to the worst music. She listened to her albums were like Shirley Bassey. Oh, oh. I got nothing. I got nothing. And ready? And Charles Aznavour. No. And, and yeah, I swear to God. This is the music that she listened to. It makes my parents' music. All he does is collect musicians like baseball cards, like Taylor Swift's the new card he wants, you know? Yes, absolutely. Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift is the is the premier card that he wants. Like that's the gold standard. But the way he talks about her, and it's very weird to me that Taylor Swift would actually donate money to Beth's kitten disease fund. Well, you, you got to remember, though, 
Taylor Swift is about a billionaire. What did what did she throw to its its charity? What fifty grand? I mean, yeah, something like that. It's a slight, a slight. It's a right. It's a little write down on a on the taxes. A thousand, exactly. It's one of the thousand that she that exactly she donated to. But they were proud of it, and they tagged her, and they thanked her, well, and they were so proud of themselves. I mean, it's no Billy Joel money for sure. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, it's just no. all right. How's Billy Joel giving giving money to that? I mean, the dude is like been broke like five times yeah wow. but apparently he's making two million dollars a concert at madison square garden which is what i looked up but i wanted to do a little deep dive into him and his wife too because i find that relationship a little bit uh shocking and, and weird i want to say his whole career he has been bad with his money M multiple managers stalls and obviously ex-wives like he that's like a recurring thing with him i feel like is just keep losing all his money you know yeah, that's who he is. And, you know, he's a itinerant alcoholic. He, you know, he has crashed many a car. He has done many a stupid thing. And when we get to him and his wife, it'll be interesting to, to, to read into the how we met story, which is kind of weirdly similar to Beth and uh, Howard's how we met story. So oh, oh, there mm -hmm. it. but let's talk about him uh, going to sleep in Miami and waking up at 11 o'clock to write all these questions that he I'm sure I need to ask him that because Write that down for me, guys. Because write that down for me, guys. Oh, I need to ask him that. I got last night. I was up. Uh, I fell asleep at eight thirty. Was up by eleven, and then for three hours, wrote down every Billy Joel question in my brain, and I have like three thousand questions, and I have them for about an hour, hour and a half tops. So he's got to answer on high speed. Yeah. Okay. What? And again, I go back to how is it that he's friends with him? And you're right. You're right, Mr. Judy Tenuta. You are so right that he doesn't know anything about his music. So therefore, he can't ask him questions about his music. He can't. I, I can't imagine what questions he has. And, you know, no, he they, were not, bad. they were bad. Mr. They were Judy bad. Tenuta and I texted about it yesterday or the day before. And he's like, hey, you know, I got to be honest. I, I really I used to like Billy Joel like a lot. And I was like, yeah, me too. Like, you know, uh, uh, there was music that was like really, really good, but I'm it's overplayed. And so it's not something that I listen to anymore. He, and actually, like you said, oh, go on, please. Oh, he actually asked him, you want to know a question? He actually asked him, do you know who invented the piano? I <laughs> swear to God, I wish I was making that up. I really wish I was making that up. That's a true. That's a true question. And like you must mention, he hasn't done a new album in 30 years. So this there's nothing for us to keep latching on to except the same old song so that you get bored. That's what you were saying yesterday. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, when he has his own station and, you know, everybody gave me shit about Led Zeppelin too and the Beatles too, but you know, they have their own stations pretty much. It's the, you know, 30 things that we know or 40 things. I'll even give you that, that we know. And then it's like the bootleg editions and the live editions and the in concert editions and the acoustic mm -hmm. versions, but essentially it's all the same shit. It's just the same mm -hmm. thing done in a variety of ways. That's all it is. And, and I had told you why I wanted to come on today is because I, I grew up on Long Island. And so it's like a rite of passage, this guy. And it's so like I've seen it. New Jersey it. Bruce Springsteen thing. Yeah, like, exactly. Uh, Billy so. Joel and, and New Jersey is Bruce or Bon Jovi, depending on your age. And, and like you, I've seen him a couple of times live. So, yeah, I'm here. Same. I've seen him. I've seen him. I only saw him the once with uh, Elton John, which was a great concert. And, um, and yeah, all right, let's move on. So here is Robin giving us her delicious Billy Joel blather, which was just ridiculous, actually. Okay. Well, you know, the coming other thing in. about him, two things that come to, he can write in any genre. That's right, Robin. He, you know, some, some of his songs sound like, you know. Yeah, I'm particularly fond of, of Billy Joel's salsa music. It's really. Yeah, different. he's great at hip hop. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> And when he does the stuff in the, the style of the Charleston, it's awesome. It's awesome. They were from the 50s. Some of the songs, you know, but updated. Some of the songs, you know, had the, the rhythms and the in the guitar of, what? you know, different what? kinds of performers. And what? he still writes an incredible song. What? And he imagines himself. You're like, he's, he's got a great imagination, even in terms of the songwriting. Because he wasn't on the Down Easter Alexa. What? 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 What did she just say? That the was Downey Selects is about fishermen. What? I don't understand. 
<laughs> so he wasn't a fisherman. Noted. Thank you. And, and he, uh, you know, I, you're going, please. I, I love Billy Joel's speed metal. That's my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> and he's essentially a, 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 you know, he's a soft rock singer songwriter. That's what he is. Period. <laughs> Period. End of story. Period. I mean, if, if people were yelling at me yesterday, Judy, about. So oh, weird. Yelling at me too. too. Just so you know. I'd love to hear this. What are, what are they mad about? They're yelling at me about um about Billy Joel. Like he's iconic. He's you know okay. I mean, criminal and blah 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 blah. He sells out Madison Square Garden time and true. time. True. Time he's time. gonna do the hundreds show. I get it. Yeah, yeah. And I, he's he has like triple gold record. No, no, no. I we we all know he's like amazing as a musician. He was you know I get it. But but, but his time is way past. His expiration date happened a long time ago. Yes. I mean, that's that's the thing. It's just, it, it, you know, and that's what that's the hard part for a lot of people to kind of get. He was big, but the age group that he's big in is older than us. I mean, seriously, out. he's mm-hmm. 74 years old. He's exactly. And his fans are 60 and up. I mean, if not, I mean, and I get it, you know, like when Bon Jovi does a concert, it's like everybody who's there has loved Bon Jovi for forever. You know, they, they, there's no new person coming in to see Bon Jovi. If no. anything, uh, best case scenario, it's like the kid of somebody who's like our age, whose parents turned them on to Bon Jovi and they kind of dig the music. So it's a cool bonding moment for like mother and child or father and child. Right. Or whatever. I get it. I get it. But, you know, again, oh, my God, how is it that you are still here, Ron Trotta? I try to ban you time and time again, and yet you keep on coming back like a, like, like a, like a herpes. Like herpes? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure he's snickering to himself now because he's such an asshole and he knows that I'm reading, <laughs> he knows I'm reading the, uh, the chat and he's getting to me. So, you know what, I'm going to cover the chat with my... Uh, clips so they don't have to listen to him anymore. So here he is discussing the fact that yes, he had to have dinner at four and then go two and a half hours. Two and a half hours it took him to get to Miami. So last night I I, I came down to Miami after dinner. Dinner being at four o'clock. I know I'm old. And uh, I ate dinner, got in my car. <laughs> what time do you eat breakfast? <laughs> five. You know, you know how it goes. <laughs> I can't imagine eating dinner at four and breakfast at five. What I don't understand is that he has nothing all day. I mean, literally, he really doesn't have it. Why are you eating dinner at your house if you wanted to drive to Miami, leave at one o'clock in the afternoon? Dude, there's nobody on the road. Two minutes. It's an hour and 22 minutes. I know. I mean, well, let's go on with this story because, but I mean, you leave in the middle of the day, it's, it's like an hour and 15 minutes from where he lives. It, it, it's just, just nothing. And they'll, they'll check him in early. He is Howard Stern. They'll check him in whenever the hell he arrives. Yeah. Whatever you want. I'm sure this, the room is reserved for him for 48 hours. And <laughs> I, I was curious about where he stayed because he was bitching yeah. a little bit about it, but we're going to get to that. Here we go. Okay. Right, Some here we go. When I come to this Miami, I stay in a hotel. When it's, and I'm a pill. As soon as I get into the hotel, I'm like, oh, you know, everything's <laughs> wrong. Where's my pillow? You know, I mean, I'm like at this point in my life, I'm just a big, I'm a big baby, you know. Right, Tamara Francois. I thought he left right after the show. He said, "I got to go, I gotta go back, and I have to get out of here." But that's not the way it worked. Just to say for his dinner, he'd be perfect at a Florida buffet with all the old people. Oh my God, totally. Except he early bird. Anything. He doesn't eat any of that food. That's the problem. You know, he has a chef. You know, he has a specific meal that has to be made for him. Um, you'll, you'll hear him momentarily well, complain about eating too many peanuts and he's getting fat. But yeah. Monique, how many ways can you make almonds? I mean, seriously. No, now he's into peanuts. Oh, peanut. So now he has peanut parmesan? Peanuts. Now, I, I see him have an amazing, if he has a chef, he has an amazing plated dinner with like, you know, reduction and, and all that crazy <laughs> stuff. Reduction. <laughs> Reduction. <laughs> Howard Stern eating reduction. Yeah. Oh, okay. And 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 dr- and balsamic drizzle and you know. <laughs> Redu- Do you know how many calories? Do you know how many calories are in a balsamic drizzle? He yeah. Eat. How many calories are in reduction and drizzle? <laughs> <laughs> this guy was counting calories of and figs. You the extra foam. <laughs> he surveyed the fish. <laughs> 
<laughs> Bobby, you're so right. I wonder what percentage of the Stern Show history is recounting itineraries. I bet it's more than 40%. David, I really need you to tell us about what's going on with you with your YouTube channel and things like that so that we can um, promote it here. So please, by all means, let us know what's going on with that. I need to hear it. Okay, so let's let's finish with the hotel complaints. And so I get in and I made sure, like, like before I left, I made duty so that I wouldn't, you know, I love my Toto toilet. Sprays water up my ass, gets everything out. I don't have to overly wipe. And I'm like, just make a duty before you go to Miami and hopefully you won't have to take another one until you get back to your house. You know, they have now these portable things you can spray yourself with if you have to leave your Toto toilet. I might have to get that. I had a night last night. I get in and right away I feel that, you know, like the Billy song, pressure. I feel that pressure. Uh You know, I feel something's (laughs) happening. And I'm like, oh no, I'm going to have to go to the bathroom the old fashioned way without my Toto toilet spraying me down. How dare Sirius no. allow this? Thank I know, I know, I know. God, my assistant got me my um, wipes. I haven't used those wipes in a long time. The ones with the the, the baby wipes. Yeah. Because I would have been in a panic. Because I don't know how how you go to the bathroom anymore without uh, having uh, either wipes or having a total toilet display. Yeah, Howard, Howard, how is it that most people can live without a like two thousand dollar friggin' toilet spraying thingamajiggy how 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 can the world live without this you know there's a thing called a shower ah well Spray we water up your ass because i know. You know i don't know why the human body is designed this way but you and i eat pretty good you make a duty and there's always remnants and uh, who remnants? Who? i mean he, he eats so psychotically clean he eats nothing how can his shits possibly be like disgusting and pasty and gross as I, I mean i literally i literally think rabbit pellets i mean seriously <laughs> the, the way he eats is like rabbit pellets so true but I, how is that possible I, i'm back to i think he tells them in the scripts to just say the write the worst stuff to just have people shut it off like it just it, it's, i don't believe this is real you can't be. Oh, yeah, it isn't really. You're right. You're right. It's not real. And no. he's trying. I always say he's trying to destroy Sirius. That's all I say. Absolutely. Absolutely. He is like K-Rock when he was going to Sirius. Actually, and somebody had mentioned in the comments today, he promoted Sirius more when he was at K-Rock than he does now. He is. He has literally stopped promoting anything on Sirius. He's completely stopped. It's done. Yeah. Well, one not of my one other group- channel. One of my clips is like a commercial for Howard, which you're going to love because it's like psychotic. Um, let's continue with the duty issues because, you know, that's what he talked about today. So now I'm like, uh, I've got all this duty in my ass. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. <laughs> so what I do, I wipe down with the wipes and I, even, I, I had to take these wipes and stick them so far up my ass and I'm still getting duty out of there. I, I remember I said, you know, that's another thing. I forget how good I have it with that Toto toilet. Rob, my finger is like pulling out to see if it's clean back there. Well, I said, you know what? Uh-uh. This is, I'm getting nowhere. I was 10 wipes in. I said, I got to get in the shower with one of those spray nozzles because I had just washed right. my hair. I didn't want to wet my whole body down. Well, I got the spray nozzle until I figured out in the hotel how to work that spray nozzle. I shoved the whole nozzle right up my ass and sure blew out whatever the hell was in there. Sure you did. Hang oh on, boy, hang on. I can't wait for the next person to take that room. <laughs> oh my God. No, I, I was, I had, and I couldn't figure out how to coordinate it. Get the soap in my ass. Get the, uh, you, they, they didn't have a bar of soap. They had like a, 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 a lotion. Oh, is this the wet stuff? No, yeah, no wet like stuff. A gel. Yeah, it's I'm called s- slapping gel soap? in my asshole. <laughs> is the Toto toilet the one luxury he talks about? Because, like, you know, most people can't afford this probably. I would have to agree with you. I mm-hmm. will admit that I do have two total toilets, but they're not total toilets. It's just a seat. It's a seat thing. Uh, the only thing that's expensive about it is that you have to have electricity plugged into the the back of your toilet. And so when I redid my bathroom in Pennsylvania, I mm-hmm. bought the seat. And I think it was like $600 at the time. Nothing. And I love it. I got to admit, because we tried it at... Um, a friend's house and I was like, oh my God, this is like the most amazing thing in the whole wide world. Well, originally they sent me one and the seat was broken on it. And so I called them to return it. 
And they said, don't bother. You can keep it. We'll send you a new one. So they sent me another one. And then I got like plastic glue from Home Depot and I glued the seat together and then I used it in another bathroom. So I have two total toilets, two, two. And they're plugged into the wall. The, Dennis, <laughs> how, many, how many truck drivers have total toilets, do you think? Oh, I, I imagine that half the half the truck drivers listening to the show have total toilets four, in the back of their rigs. Four of them have <laughs> Four of them have it. None of them <laughs> have it. But I'm wait, more disturbing is to, this this fetish about shoving sh stuff up Who his does ass. That? Who I does mean, that? seriously. Well, usually gay guys do. I mean, that's that's kind of that's a that's kind of not normal. <laughs> he needs to see a gastroenterologist for sure. Uh, I feel or he already heard he does. I no, he needs to go to a, a bathhouse. Thing. Like, I feel like this is a mother thing. I feel there's like some sort of weird anal thing. The temperature when thing? When he was a child. Yeah, I think that this stems back to that. I don't think he's lying about shoving his fingers up his ass to oh, get no. his duty out. I really oh, no, don't. No, no, no. I think this is true. I do. Um, And I think that it stems from Ray. It's Ray's fault. You know, they shove things up his ass. like constantly. He likes it. He has, remember, he asked Allison to shove her finger up his ass and she wouldn't do it. Yeah. And then, I, uh, and then no. Quinn Consuela washes his hands after, helps him clean them up. Exactly. Oh. Now, you know, he hides all that shit because he doesn't want anybody to know that he's having like these. I thought he people. leaves it on the, on the nightstand. Oh yes. You're right. That's so disgusting. Yes, you're right. He said that, but I don't believe him for a second. I, I don't believe that. So all right. That, that was a script The Gary going to the, the nightstand. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, you know what? I don't believe that to be true. Dennis will tell you that everything is a scripted thing. Oh, it's scripted. You actually watch him turn the pages. I mean, <laughs> he's reading page by page. Yes, I did told you, Chaka Khan, why I have two total toilets. Because one was, it was like a BOGO, practically. It was practically a BOGO. The only, the only... Bad thing about him, you have to you have to raise your pinky when you're when you're using it. No, so that's you, here's the beauty of it. Let me just tell you, there's a little handheld remote control, and so what you do is after you go to the bathroom, one or two, whatever. Um, so there's a little spray, and it's warmed already. It's like preheated. There's like a little chamber behind it that fills water so that it's warm, and you can gauge the temperature of the water by whatever it is you want it to be. So uh, let's say I have it on medium. So you press the little button and this little tube comes out and it has three little holes in it. And then that gauges where on your nether regions you want it to hit. Do you want to hit on your, on your butt? Do you want to hit on your whooshy? I mean, it just depends. And, and everybody's stuff is like in a different position. So you position it where you want it. And then uh, it's a power level which you can do from one to five. Where Does goes, five lift you up the seat? <laughs> right. Mo, H Howard should hire you to do the commercial. Basically, that's no. the way it is. And then there's a drying function so that you can dry yourself and not have to use toilet paper at all. But I've never used that because I think it's weird to not use toilet paper. So that's the way. That's the oh, way. wait. I love this description. Mike McGinn, finger of Poseidon. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great name. I I I want a product. I'm going to market a product called the Finger of Finger Poseidon. Of Poseidon. <laughs> <laughs> you can advertise on his show. Hey, you ever <laughs> want the Finger of Poseidon? <laughs> <laughs> and yes, I did say the word wushy. That's what my mommy used to call it when I was a little girl. You're wushy. All right, let's move on. So he's obviously fat from all these peanuts because he studies in <laughs> the bathroom. Yeah. So let's take a look at that. Oh God! And I was in, I'm in the hotel, and I, they have this beautifully lit bathroom, like bright lights and everything. And then I'm naked with a with a with a, a apparatus in my ass, blowing water up it. <laughs> and I look in the mirror, and my belly is big. I got to get in shape. This is I've had enough. I'm eating too many. I'm eating too many peanuts. After my dinner, that's wow. where I'm putting on weight. That's I'm where taking fistfuls from. of peanuts sure, and eating sure, them. Sure, sure, sure. Fistful. Uh, please do me a favor. Throw out the peanuts so I don't get heavy. Peanuts. So asking the staff to throw out the peanuts? Peanuts. 
Mr. Howard, I'll just take them home. <laughs> yeah, why do you even have the peanuts if you want them thrown out? Why? Do, hey, hey, I have an idea. I have an idea. Why don't you take the fucking peanuts and throw them out? No, no, no. That's what staff's for. That's what. But, but seriously, we know he eats more than peanuts. I mean, he's he's, he's a gour gourmet, you know, healthy food. No. Absolutely. No, I I I agree. Oh, you, you mean healthy? Yeah, I think healthy, but not gourmet. I don't think he eats gourmet. I don't think he has. I think he has a chef that absolutely makes him, you know, tries to spice up his pescatarian lifestyle, <laughs> you know, and uh and make him things that are like fresh and and healthy and good for him. Absolutely. I, I agree. But he's like a petulant child, so I mean, I, it's almost like not eating his broccoli. I mean, I could. Yes, just... he also has the taste palate of a of a of a seven year old. Yeah, exactly. So, it's, ooh, you know, so I, I could see him eating either one meal a day or or two, like very not three meals a day though. I don't see three meals a day, but he, you know, he's always told us that he eats yogurt in the morning, and then he has something when he gets off air, and then he has dinner at four o'clock, and then he snacks on something before he goes to bed at 7 or 7 30 yeah. whatever ridiculous hour he goes to bed and then drags his Dude, remember this you show used to be about comedy yeah what, ha what happened to the what, what, what about the, now we're just talking about, about the laughter yeah uh, <laughs> where are the jokes where are the jokes um I have a, did we did, did we pull the clip though of him saying how long it took him to drive there is this i have that somewhere um, okay. But we're going to first go to how his assistant sets up his room because we need to know about that. So yeah, he has an advanced team that goes there. <laughs> yeah. So if any of you heard the time that John and I interviewed a guy who used to work as a, an assistant to the assistant's assistant. So he used to be the assistant to Laura Lackner's assistant. That's Sorry. what his job was. Highly recommend you listen to that because it's kind of curious the way Howard used to rent out a full apartment in his building for the staff to be there. And it would be Laura, Laura's assistant, the assistant's assistant, and then like an intern. So the four people helping Howard out on a daily basis. And this is not that long ago. Jesus so now that Christ. he has an assistant in Florida, I'm very curious about whether he has somebody like part time or temporary or flies with him. I can't imagine somebody flies with him because that no. would take you six months away from your own home. So I can't imagine well, that that's. So you case. know what it actually might be? It might actually just be an assistant that just stays at that estate. The estate's so big, it needs a part, it needs people there because you have to keep it running. Yeah, like several I mean, houses. It, it has to keep running. You that's can't just, it's on the beach. Not assistance. That's housekeeping. That's not Yeah, but the assistant also does like any mail that comes there, does the little higher end functions. You know, they, they do work there. Yeah. I can imagine that because, I mean, remember, he's very wealthy. You pay somebody 80 grand a year to come and hang out at your house on the beach, you know, be your, open your mail, get everything ready for you when you're going to come down. Da, da, da. How much of that can there possibly be in a six month span? King, when you're not there? Then we're talking about King Baby, who had four people assisting him. Still does, still does. No, I would never go to bed at seven o'clock. No, I, I had been up until um, one o'clock that day. Seriously. Well, when you say, you know, him paying an, another employee 60,000 a year is nothing to him. No, it's true. It's nothing. That's true. That's true. So I don't know what it means by assistant because we don't know what we don't know. Uh, David says, I love the idea that the great American nightmare sets the stage for Howard to go on an anti-establishment rage against the system rant about what time you should eat yogurt. Yeah. <laughs> this is true. Hold on, Mo. You're telling me that Laura, who was an assistant, had an assistant who had an assistant who had an assistant. Yes, 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 yes. yes. So Laura is his main chick who has an assistant or two because the assistant has an assistant. And then that assistant had an intern who was the intern for everybody in the office. So at any given time, there's four people that are helping Howard do pretty much everything that he does. I mean, Justin, I imagine Howard naked scurrying about in the hotel looking like Meg Mucklebones from the movie Legend with Tom Cruise. Wow. That's a great <laughs> reference. Oh, that's fantastic. 
That's fantastic. Mm. Um, yeah, Laura definitely makes at least 120, 150. Oh, yeah, easy. Uh, but by the way, she's been with him forever, so it, it could possibly be more than that. She, she's in the, I believe she, last time we looked, and it probably hasn't changed, she's in the defined benefit plan. I know that. I mean, and you're not going to, it's hard to get removed from that. So she's she's in it. Of course, you can be removed from it if you're fired. Yeah, but it's hard to do it. You really don't want to do it when you're, if you're fired. You're removed. Yeah, oh, I mean, if you're fired, but she's not fired. She's yeah. just, yeah. Dr. She's... Khan says, my friend is an estate manager. She maintains a one percenter's home, puts their dog on a private jet to the Riviera when necessary, oversees so chairs, et cetera. Yeah, I get that. I get that person. I do. I get that person for Howard, but I don't get the advanced team that has to go there and make sure that he has fucking wet wipes so that he can shove his fingers up his ass to get duty out when he gets there. But let's hear about that. I, I mean, he probably has a full-time vacuumer, right? Yeah, of course he does. Of course well, yeah. He does. Um, assistant sets up his room. Here we go. I want to thank my assistant for having those wipes there. I was like, boy, she's good. She is good. She knew Does she didn't she embarrass me. a special me. bag for you? or She gets down to my room and uh, before I get there and put baby wipes right by the toilet. Oh, oh so they, they were already there. Now that's an assistant. That's somebody who is assisting. Assisting is thinking, assisting. thinking ahead. Wait, is it true? Wiggy Dearest is saying Laura Lackner retired a few years ago. You mentioned it on the show. I but he said that. he just mentioned her name like last week that they somebody had a, or that somebody had a caller. I, I remember them, them having a conversation about Laura Lackner. Mm. So maybe she tried to retire and he called, pulled her out of it because he did mention her recently. Do not do that, Jimmy Coliseum. Do not do that. <laughs> Again, what what could what could honestly be more boring than him talking about the bathroom and his eating habits, like? Like, is there any like staring at the wall? Like, what's oh, more? You're so, what, you're so cute. So you're so much, <laughs> and so much more boring. Than right. How about how about recapping yesterday's show with fake emails about yesterday's show and then playing that, clips about that's it? That's probably more interesting than the food and bathroom. I don't know. No, no. It, you, okay, okay. I believe you. Uh, no, you know what no. it is? It's the little stupid things that we glean from the show that we um, take comfort in at this point because the show is so awful that. Um, any little insight into his regular, stupid, entitled, horrible, 0.5 percent of life is something that we like. But but I see him doing this on purpose to destroy the show. That's that I do. I, I see the merit in it. I see the merit in destroying the show. And, and you know, a lot of times I'll go on to Twitter and, and look at Bring Back Jackie, who will constantly CC serious and whoever that <laughs> is and. It's like, I cannot believe that Jennifer Witz allows this to happen. I cannot yes. believe that this is the show that you allow to be on air. But, yeah. but you know, the, the thing is, and, what's, and what really should really upset every investor in SiriusXM is that this is the highest paid employee of SiriusXM. End no. of story. Bar none. He, what? Bar none. Yeah. Bar none, yeah. Because he would never let anybody be paid more than him there. And you're allowing this man to do nothing to help your company. This but Dennis, money. Uh, the intelligent investors left 20 years ago. These are just pe like m grandma and grandpa is still holding on to like well, three no, cents uh, of stock. Exactly. Liberty, Media, you know, Liberty Media is a major holder of Sirius XM. And I don't know how they're allowing this at this point because <laughs> You, you're they're dying, I and mean, they're and they're unless they just don't care and they'll just push it off in the trash because it's not a very long it's not a very long dive for them to go away. Not at this rate. No, agreed. All right, let's move on. Uh, our next clip. Yay! Not on. Oh, this was so funny. So he's going on and on and on promoting, uh, looking at uh. Dakota Johnson and what she was wearing on howardstern.com. So he must have mentioned it about seven times. I'm going to mm -hmm. show you what Dakota Johnson was wearing so that you may appreciate what was going on here. And uh, hang on a second. Let me get to my. Has he ever brought up her boyfriend or husband, Chris Martin, over these past few days? No. Um, did yes, he did. He's oh, kind of in passing, not 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 like. I mean, not that it was a big deal, but yes. Yeah. So here she is. 
It's for all of us to see. God, she is desperate for any type of attention. Does she have to be though? I mean, she seems that way though. I mean, the movie's a bomb. Chris Martin. She has an acting career. She's well. The after this movie, of probably Don not. Johnson and Melanie Griffin, right? I mean, is that who yeah. she is? Yeah, but yeah. I mean, that screams attention. Well, here we go. Let's listen to how we're talking about it. God bless her. God bless what her. an outfit. Go look on HowardStern.com. Don't crash the site. Don't what is it? Uh, it's, on our account. it's on our Twitter account, not on the website. Well, you told so me at, the website. No, you, at uh, Stern Show. No, you told me the website. No. Why don't you have it on the website, though? Because we don't own the picture, so the easiest thing, the easiest, best, fastest oh. way to get this out was to retweet it on our Twitter account. Yeah, but uh, she so wants all that pictures. out there. He's obsessed with her right now. I, well, no, 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 no. I, I, I figured it out. I figured it out. It's not, it's not really, he, he wants her to come in. Yes. Because he, 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 he's trying to, because this movie is going to bomb. So he figures he could have her come in and he's been mentioning the movie, trying to mention her, trying to get her to come in because she's going to be in a bad movie. Has she been in once before already? No, not, not okay. that I know. Of. Okay. So there she is in her hot, sexy Gucci outfit, pretty much naked. Yeah. Is there any chance that Sony's paying for like a Madam Web um, commercial? Probably. Because well, they're, they they're really desperate. Madam Web, as much as they have just mentioned her. Like, well, he, he, that's his thing, though. He, he like, Says he hates something, but he talks about it for three days. You know, he he, he mentioned Ma he mentioned Madam Web a lot. He he did, um, and yeah, I, it, it's a commercial. It's a built-in commercial. That, that that's the other part of it. It's a it's a pay for play, and she'll probably come in. I almost freaking guarantee it now. She'll come in Cause because you the guys have said so bad. She's gonna have to. Because you, you guys have said multiple times, so many comic book movies, he doesn't even say anything about, like, the like Endgame, or he did never nope. a word. Nope. But, yeah, so, like, that's why I think commercial. All right, oh. let's see what's going on with Madam Web so that we can see. Yeah, oh, my goodness. Oh, my it's goodness. really bad. Oh, my goodness. 3.8. 3.8. And they're being generous. 3.8. That's it's almost bad. impossible to happen. The trailer is so painful to watch that, and that's the best in the movie. I've read reviews about it. I've watched videos. It's bad. I mean, I, I might see it anyway. <laughs> it's so bad. Because I have to. I saw Aquaman too, and that was bad. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm so sorry. I feel sorry for you. Well, you I did it for the deafening. You and Arm are probably the only two people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think he went. I don't think he went either. Exactly. Either. Jesus Christ. I can't believe you would actually go see that. All right. Let's move on. Uh, okay. So here he is talking about his car ride and how oh, I, and you know what? I, again, he, he talks about Paramount Plus in a negative standpoint, but yet halo in a positive standpoint and i guess that's the subterfuge of not making us believe it's an ad within an ad so a thousand yeah, percent yeah i talked to the uh the nice lady of the house this morning i'm like you know he's doing an ad for halo and she just looked at me and went halo the video game yeah yeah you think he's ever played it no <laughs> then why would he watch that i have no he idea. never even played pong he doesn't no. he's never picked up a freaking <laughs> controller in his life <laughs> <laughs> never, never had picked up a controller because he, he, he had daughters. Play. So the daughters, I doubt they played Nintendo or Atari. He hasn't even no. played a game on his like iPhone. Like he doesn't, no, he doesn't even play know, what's with the stupid fruits or the birds. Like he hasn't ever played. <laughs> he and, never even played solitaire. Yeah. No, nothing, nothing. Sports. Uh, he played chess online. Sport I think ball. he actually uh, mentioned that he played chess online once. And that's it. Though. Oh I mean, yeah, yeah. Halo yeah. is like a, it's a video game for like guys under thirty five, and I'm like, this is not, this is not your movie. I feel like TV Halo is older than that though. Now, Dennis, I feel like uh, what fifty? Let me see. Let me see. But it's definitely not Howard. So this is an ad. <laughs> let me see when Halo originally came out. Hold on, I'm gonna twenty years it. ago, I think. I think it's 20 Hold years on. ago. I'm going to tell you. Just give me a second if I can find it. Halo franchise. All right, here we go. It was created. Wow. Okay. When do you think it was created? Like 
Uh, 2000. Like 99, 98. 22 years old. It was oh. launched in 2001. Oh, yeah. Okay. So there's yeah, a very well, good possibility that, you know, people over 40 are actually playing this at this uh, and maybe. Very good. <laughs> Listen, if you're a gamer, you're a gamer. I mean, but that's still, a 70 year old grandfather no, who has- likes listening to uh, musicals is not going to be playing Halo. No, no, no he's never mentioned it before, like nope. last week or two weeks ago. Exactly. Ever when they start getting paid. So here's John Hine talking to him on his two-hour car ride. Even get me started. You got to fucking hear this. So the whole time I'm driving down from my house to Miami, which I told you, it took me about two and a half hours. Two and a half hours. I was on the phone with John Hine talking Billy Joel. We were going over notes and ideas and all kinds of stuff. Billy Joel, Billy Joel, Billy Joel. So finally, I'm about two hours in. I got a half hour. Which is when he decides he's going to turn on his Paramount. And you know, I'm not really even understanding what's going on here because when I went to Vegas, I downloaded a couple of things because I knew I was flying the worst airline known to mankind, which is Spirit Airline, which I would never fly again. But there was no other way to get from here to there. And uh, so I downloaded a bunch of stuff. And I had no issue. I mean, I downloaded it. I watched it on the flight. I was able to charge my iPad. And that's it. I mean, there's... I don't even understand. What well, I'm still having a hard. Do. I'm still having. Go yeah. ahead. You no, know, is he trying to live stream or is he trying to download? I just don't even understand. Well, what I what I'm still boggled by is how it's two and a half hours. I I am I am I have not a clue how in God's name <laughs> it's two and a half hours that direction because everybody's leaving Miami at that time. They're not going into it. Well, I t- I tested it on my my app but it's an hour and a half right it's an hour 20 is really like your your worst case scenario and that's when you take like 90 91 down or something like right. that um however if you're taking the roads without highway it's three hours and 15 minutes which nobody would do that because that's- well first of all he definitely wouldn't do that because you go through some very bad neighborhoods if you did that it wouldn't, it wouldn't happen it wouldn't happen exactly he said he was watching Paramount Plus on his phone. No, he said he was. He downloaded a bunch of stuff from Paramount Plus, and then when he went to play it, it wasn't playing. Which I don't understand because I you can't don't understand it either. either. I, 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 okay. I, 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 there's nothing. <laughs> I, you can say okay. There's nothing to say. There's just nothing. <laughs> no, but I mean, and, and you know the absurdity of him having to stay in a hotel from a place that is an hour and fifteen minutes away from his <laughs> home to do one show. I mean, just mind numbing. It is mind numbing. It's an hour and 15 minutes. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I don't even understand what, you know, why Sirius wasted the money to do any of that. Because I mean, he has to, because, you know, it's so funny because he wakes up at five in the morning. He had easily been there by like 6 30. Oh, easily. You no. Know, he could have showered and walked out the door gone to the studio and been home. But no, 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 no. What don't you realize about the fact that, you know, Beth had to play pretty girl Mm -hmm. and make sure that she got dressed up so that she'd go out with Howard. I hope he likes my dress for our 5 p.m. Let's just take a second and look at those friggin' tube socks with with marbles in them hanging there. Good God. I mean, that chest is a disaster. Oh, (laughs) good Lord. It's so weird the way she looks at the camera too. It's but like- look, I mean, the, the way it actually looks almost like it's fake. The way the I mean, well, they are. Well, but you know the whole, the way they're attached. She's very thin right now, like and extremely, <laughs> and so you can see the concave of her chest, which then makes the the fakeness of her of her boobies stand out. But we'll come back to her in a few. Okay, minutes. let's come back to that later. But you know, I mean, yeah. But the whole point of this whole making this this, am- this incredibly long trip, when you live in Palm Beach, which is pretty much the same weather as you're going to get in Miami. I, I mean, it, it's it's no different. It's not like you're coming from Detroit. You're coming from Palm Beach to go to Miami. Yeah. I, I don't. And he doesn't do anything to truly embrace Miami. There's nothing. He's not doing anything different. You know what I mean? He's going to eat at the hotel. I mean. No, they made a five o'clock dinner reservation, which I'm sure they did with Billy and his wife. Oh, absolutely. You know, that's what they did. So let's, let's go on. 
and let's talk about the color purple. So, <laughs> you know, and this was all set up because the fact that Robin enjoined him in conversation about the re-release of the color purple, where apparently they put music to it as well and made it into like a musical or something like this. I'm not aware of this at all. So I'm just going by what they said. I've, I've heard rumors oh. of it. I, I so, yeah. So he's talking about color. Purple. Just made a new one, Howard. It's a musical, a musical based on the Broadway show. What a stupid idea. They put music in the color purple. That was a good that was a good movie. You mean they, they break out singing in the middle of the movie? Uh, <laughs> oh my god. I think that oh. must be tank, right? Nobody went to see that. Oh, more people that went to see Private Parts went to see that. The Broadway show is a hit. Yeah. Broadway yeah. show's a hit, exactly. Mm -hmm. The 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 original movie I think stinks. Uh so he likes it, but I doubt he's ever seen it. He's definitely never seen it. Oh no, no. But the thing is that's sixty millions on top of all the money, all the money they made before from Color Purple. I mean, they made a lot of money on the original release. Yeah. So I mean, you know, this one could do okay. Wait, go up. I, I think it probably it may have lost my go up a little bit. I want to see. Color Purple it, Wonka. There it is. Color Purple made eighteen point one million on Christmas Day opening. But it's projected to lose oh, yeah. between eighty and a hundred million, and to make right. it worse, the industry isn't taking the Oscar bait. What happened? Hmm. But you know, it's a re-release. But they made so much money on the first time; they can take the hit on this to try to get the Oscar. I think that's what they did. Oh well. But I, I doubt. I mean, the movie was already nominated for Oscars, so I, I don't. I don't see this getting double. Well, you know? It's an old movie. It's like Disney re-releasing things live. I mean, there's no need for it, but yet here we are. I mean, I, I don't understand the reasoning. Or... Oprah, yeah, it's oh, remember Oprah produced it. Isn't it a story like Danny Glover was raping uh, Oprah Winfrey? It's his yeah, daughter. Whoopi Goldberg was like mentally. Challenged. Oh no, Whoopi! Yeah, Whoopi Goldberg was you know <laughs> being molested by. Exactly. Dad. <laughs> Details are hazy. I, 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 I've never I seen thought. it, so I have no it, it idea. It wasn't a fun movie. I mean, if That's people like it, I'm sorry. Oh, Frank the Tank, The Holocaust, now on Broadway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they probably think already I'm mean. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then he, so he goes from that into talking about you know, he should do private parts of the musical. And I don't want to even go into this. I'm just giving you like a little taste of it. And here we go. Holy mackerel. I might do private parts of the musical. That'd be pretty good. Pig virus. Pig virus. It's amazing how they were able to go right into the music and then he spent like another 15 minutes on it. You're driving me crazy. This reminds me of that crap he did with Amy Schumer. What was that musical? Oh, my God. Can we discuss Amy Schumer for like a hot second? It was like Republicans, the musical or something stupid. So what, what her horrible show that he, he also promoted today? Amy Schumer. Amy Schumer has has blown up. Bigger, so, bigger. Oh my god! I mean, I, I mean, she, she was a cow before. I mean, what is she? A full on hippo? I mean, she was no, disgusting. she's um, she's really, she's really John Doe. She looks like she got stung by a 400 pound bee. Well, she's really big. Ah, right that, that's a cabbage patch. Something going on with her. Seriously, that looks like steroids, or or she's in, she's on something, or I think it's cheeseburgers. Right? That's not natural. That's not natural fat, though. That's like you know, I know she's always been like a little bit on the chubbly side, but this is like unnaturally bloated of some sort, right? I mean, she's not even herself. It's not even like a a normal visual, right? Kind of, well, she kind of reminds me of what's her name, McCarthy. Um, uh, kind of almost looks just like her now. Um, the other McCarthy, the, the ugly McCarthy sister. Um, Who? The one that always plays like the, I can't, all of a sudden I can't think of her name. Melissa. <laughs> Melissa McCarthy, yeah. No, but even looks like McCarthy, her. I think it looks better. This is like, uh, I, I don't know, something's wrong with her, for sure. 
I don't even know what's going on here. I don't really care. <laughs> oh my god, that looks just disturbing. It, whatever it is, it's Jimmy Fallon for you. But uh, yeah, something's going on with Amy. I, I don't know. Maybe she's sick. Uh, Ida thinks prednisone. Okay, that can do oh, okay. that. I'll, I'll give you that because it looks like steroid okay. ish or, or something going on there. But she's really, really like, like somebody put a <laughs> and blew her up kind of weirdness. No, but not like this. She's never been like this. This is just unnatural unnatural um, bigness going on right here. Sorry. She doesn't look like herself even. She looks like a human cabbage patch. Uh, Seriously. <laughs> yeah, she is. She's swolled. She's swolled. It's all right. Okay, let's move on. Um, I don't even know why I digressed into... Why did we digress? Oh, yeah, it's because he actually did mention her, her thing. He they did a little, They had a little commercial for it, her show on, I think, Netflix... Oh, okay. Yeah. So after that, there was this really weird Stern Show promo. So this is like the ad that runs to promote the Stern Show. And I found it to be very bizarre. Here we go. 100 that. At the Howard Stern Show, anything can happen. Hey, I'm trying something new for people who are listening now. I'm breaking into my own channel. As a listener, you have to be nimble. Dude, are you, you crazy? You want to lick my balls? Are you nuts? For five grand, I'll do it Christy. Right now. Look, Come on. I can't believe he's doing this. You have to be agile, ah, agile, nimble. Ah, ah. You have to be ready at all times for a surprise. Never know. And you with never us know right now, it's just something John to say hello. Look oh at you. Yeah. Oh my God. Hi guys, the Howard Stern Show. You just never know. You never know. You never know. You never know. Your tax refund. Can you, Marcy? Marcy wrote that. That's a hundred percent Marcy. Oh, the no, buzzwords. No, no, Marcy does not work for Sirius. She works for him. That's a Howard approved ad, though. It uses all the buzzwords Not, she you have likes. To be nimble and agile yeah. to buzzwords. Know that he could be on any time. It's not just Monday through Wednesday. He could be on any time, and anybody could show up. And I tried really hard to find out when it was that Elton John was in because. I don't know. Mark Spriggan, I think, is officially off the... A couple of years ago. Server? I mean, I could, we could look on our site, radiogunk.com, because I, if, if he was in the last few years... I don't remember it, though. Does anybody? Do He's been know? on. It was like three years ago. Was it a phone call? or was No, it, it, was, a, it was a Zoom. It was a Zoom call. Yeah, right? yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. He Zoomed um, in. I don't know. You never know. You never know. He Zoomed in, though. You never know. You never know when Howard could come on. Just, you know, so you should listen all the time because you never know when he's going to be on. That's what they're trying to say. That, you know, that's great for that's great for a um, a show about current, you know, it's supposedly about current events and comedy. Just, you know, don't have a schedule for it. Just have it randomly show up because that always works best know. in media. And she they, they, they're grasping at air like it's it's over. Like it just sounds like so desperate. It, it really is. It's kind of sad and depressing. All right. So then we go into um, fan favorites. You know, everybody's talking about Ronnie and his uh, not being able to write handwritten notes to everybody as a thank you. And he was genuinely upset. Like he, oh, he was pissed off. Was he great. was fuming today. So he came on ready, ready for action. Here we go. You, you guys could shit on me all you want. Go ahead. I, I'm used to it. it I, I've been here long enough to take it. Oh. But after the show, so Stephanie goes to me, how was the show today? She always asked me. I go, um, right, oh, right, it, was right. it was just fucking great, you know? <laughs> so she knew, obviously, something went down. She goes back right. and she listens to the replay. Oh, dear. Oh, and all I got to say for her, speaking That's, for her, go ahead, okay, is that whoever is not happy Go ahead with the card with the card that they got, and they're upset about all the money they spent coming to the wedding. Right. Okay, look, guys like Jason who complained and Chris Wilding and Jason putting up, um, you know, uh, polls to take on the internet and all this kind of shit. Well, I was we were right, we were wrong. You know what? Get in touch with us off the air because I know you spent a lot That's of so money. Upset. We will be gladly sent you back. Oh. Your gift. Wow. Yeah. So. Yeah. Can Can I say? You know, him, Ronnie, putting it on the air. He's only himself to blame now. It's like, dude, just never talk to them again. No, 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 no. That's his bread and butter. He has to talk to them. 
But he's just well, if he's that upset. Does he really need the money? I mean, you know, does he still need this to be well, part of his life? If you listen, though, and he said he spent now, this is the part that really upsets me. He says he spent a hundred thousand dollars on that wedding. Yeah. The Stern show should have just friggin' paid for it. But don't you get that because the Stern show didn't pay for it? That's why there's no video. That's why there's no audio. There's nothing relating to his wedding. They, he didn't give them that that uh, that gimme. He didn't give it. He didn't hand it to them on a silver. I, I understand that, but Jesus, that's why there's nothing. If if the Stern show would have paid for the wedding. Thousand percent, you would have seen it all over. Like, but then a lot of those people that are on the red list would not have been able to come. Yeah, they maybe thought, the offer know, was. They, what'd they, you say, Mel? They would have just avoided him. Th them. They would have. There's a lot of them there, though. Richie Wilson. They would have not filmed. You know, I don't even know if Tim went. I, I can't even remember at this point. But they would have <laughs> just avoided them in terms of what they would have recorded at the. Athlete. Yeah, but once everyone starts drinking, I'm sure they're going to be in the way and and want to go on the video. I don't know; it would probably be a, what a mess. That? You know, nothing came out from the wedding, right? There were mm -hmm. a couple of pictures, and that was it. No, I if they knew that Howard was going to use it for content, but, but the but they used it for content beforehand. It was used extensively for months as content. Uh, just never, it just never stopped. It that was wedding, constantly was content. I'm giving to the content. You should have just paid just for using that content. You don't even need to record the freaking thing. Yeah. But you know, I mean, Howard himself, you know, whatever gift he gave was nothing compared to the million dollars he made on on the back of that wedding. Because there was no lifting, literally letting Ronnie ramble on for hours uh, every week and getting paid four thousand dollars a minute. And he he gave nothing. He gave nothing back. So, that, I mean, that's the part I have about it is that they already got all their content from it before and after. Yeah. Coach is like, Mo, thoughts on Jason posting shit about the wedding. I hate him. You know what? That's Jason's job. That's Jason. That is his job. It has always been his job. Jason's job is to be the rat the monster in the back room that makes sure that his, you know, big giant sized ears are always open, listening to everybody's shit and reporting back on everything. He's Howard actually said that today. That's his job. It is his job. He's totally yeah, and the thing is, he is an executive producer of the show. Yes. And exactly. He's, I mean, that, that's, that's the type of person Howard lunts around. And, and Howard and, putting and, this new, new stuff on about, about the, cards and thank you cards it's like he's just trying to ruin ronnie right now he's trying to upset and and ruin the wedding you know well because he can't there's nothing else he can harm ronnie with but he knows that ronnie gets upset easily and you know obviously everybody in the back is going to tell you that you know a pre-printed card that came out for us thank you didn't suffice for them and i tend to agree that a handwritten note would have been the best move honestly that is the best move, especially when people spend a lot of money and fly out to see you for a destination wedding. It's the very least you can do. It truly is the very, very least you yep. can do. Is to say, dear Jason and whatever but your stupid wife. Remember, it was, it was Stephanie that was in charge of that because it seemed like Ronnie was very hands off because this was old hat to him. And so I guess she didn't get the good guidance of what to do. <laughs> Mo, you're expecting these people to have a class. No, I don't expect them to have a class. I, no. I, I, you had to know though. You had to know that if they did do this, that it would get back to Howard and it would go on air. That's all. Yeah. You know, when oh, you absolutely. do something this stupid as a pre-printed card without any personalization to it, it's going to get back to him, and it's going to be it's going to be fodder for the for the show. It just has to be. Um, here he is, still upset. I think. Did I play this? Let me see. You know, with with. Uh... You know, with looking at the pictures, don't look at the pictures. Throw the fucking thing in the garbage, okay? I don't think <laughs> shit. She tried to do everything she could to make uh, this wedding perfect for everybody. Can I ask okay? a question? Just please. so you know. Okay, Brit, I hear you. Don't fucking call me and ask me if you can interview it because she will not talk to you. Okay? Fred is emailing her now. He just wants to know should he email her or you? He I mean, it's just, you know, just, 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 just. Tweaking, tweaking, tweaking. Mm -hmm. Willingham, yeah. It's just such a dick move. I just, I feel so sorry. I actually wrote to uh, Stephanie on Instagram today saying, oh my God, I'm, I'm so sorry that you're dealing with this shit. 
Oh. Yeah, well, she had she. It's not like she just met him three weeks ago and married him. No, she's, she's been around this for a while now. Yeah, you she gotta know what's she coming. Into. She yeah. knows what she's getting into. All right, we're gonna move on a little bit from Ronnie and Stephanie, and uh, yeah, let's hear about. <sighs> so we all know about October. We all know that that is you know, all cock all the time in October, which actually amounted to probably maybe about two hours worth of content the entire at the end. Month. At the very, very end of the month. So Actually, it was in November it happened. Yeah, it was kind of, yes, yes, you, you <laughs> happened to be right. You happened to be right. So now the the staff, the crack staff of 70, have come out with something brilliant and amazing that I think you're all going to love. Here we go. I do want to say uh, I was in the dumbest meeting I've ever been in, and I've been in some dumb meetings, but uh, we had a whole discussion the other day. You know, we have a staff meeting every Thursday provided I'm, you know, around to do it. Really? And uh, But mostly every Thursday we have a staff meeting. Mm -hmm. And the guys came to me. They have an idea. They have an idea that we should, um, you know how we have Cocktober? Yes. The idea, the idea here is that they want to change the name from March to Farch. A whole month where we celebrate, oh. where we celebrate farting. On I the see. Air. Marinate that for a moment. So, the, the best part of that is, you know, we have a we have a meeting every Thursday. Well, not really every Thursday. It's like when I'm available, um, and, and sometimes like that. Well, then it's not a we. It's a everybody else except everybody else has a meeting, and they tell you about it later on because you're not there on Thursday. Um, Farch. and to think Farch. that this fart. That this is that this is actually a thought, farch, that is thrown around, and and they actually had jingles, farch, farch. They actually had jingles and all sorts they of things already done to this jingle. Oh, oh, at, at what age does fart stop being funny? Like, is it ten? A long time ago. <laughs> but like, ten year olds are not watching, listening to this. So I don't know. I, I just farch. Tr truck drivers, you know, long. <laughs> this is the best they could do. This is Farch. this is the pinnacle. They sat for months doing meetings before they presented this to Howard. And Jason even said, "Yeah, we put on a full court press because we thought that Farch was." This is what they thought. Not not <laughs> vaginary, but Farch. <laughs> <laughs> Farch. Farch. Uh, <laughs> it is cringe it is you guys it's as cringe as it gets it just doesn't make sense of course it doesn't make sense and then people called in and said god that was horrible that's a really fucking I, I mean let's say this came from richard i mean he was he actually wasn't you know doing funny things 20 years ago like this is not funny like i don't know well, you know what it is? The problem is, is that nothing they do is funny. Therefore, no. whatever, this is the best they can do. This is, this is the best of the worst is what is what's going on here. Um, so then of course they talk about the fact that it's uh Valentine's day, which of course, you know, Beth celebrates for like months on end. And just in case you missed now, let's keep in mind that this picture <laughs> She's very into showing us herself in this weird kind of position nowadays. So that's that's Mado. Those that's a Mado pos position. It learned that it, when it went to finishing school. It's a Mado. Is that like an elongated setting or something? I don't know, but this is when I noted that her. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. So. So this is her going out with her little, you know, three thousand dollar necklace and her four hundred dollar denim jumper and her thousand dollar Gucci bag. And of course, I got my little special Valentine's Day kitten shoes on because they're so cute. I just what I did was I listened to my wife. Yes. And I like like all we were walking, and she says we were walking, and it was cold, freezing weather, and. But sure, go ahead. Buy her fucking fingerless gloves or gloves that she can press on her phone with because you know in February for Valentine's Day, she's going to be in Florida. In Florida. Really use goes, those gloves, uh, you idiot. You know, when I when I text, I watch her. She texts outside. She takes off her gloves and her hands are freezing. So I bought her a oh, whole buddy. bunch of gloves with the 
poor baby, because on the walk with you, she can't spend the what half hour with you that she's out with you. Mo, would you want to spend a half no, hour with him? Be present <laughs> with you for your stupid walk that you're doing. It's very important that she's saving. I'm saving lives. You can text with your gloves on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. To me, that's thoughtful. It didn't. It didn't seem nice. to blow her mind really. But I thought that was thoughtful. Then I and I got her flowers. But then I I, I custom designed a pair of Converse for her. Oh. With uh with our cat Helen's picture on it. That oh. went over big. That went over big. Yeah. But he doesn't tell you until probably like five minutes later. And, you know, Robin's like, wow, that must have been expensive. He's like, you don't even know. He's like, because I had to do them all over again because I got the size wrong. You ordered them too small because yeah. that's like a that's a tranny Jumbo Sam 13 there. Jumbo size foot, like canoes. <laughs> <laughs> Mon- Monsoon has it still. Metal. Monsoon has the greatest line with that. Though. It's tranny, tranny Sam, tranny Sam shoes. <laughs> Tranny Sam shoes. Yes, that's exactly right. So there's that. That's, there's that picture of Beth. But wait, Oof. wait, hold on. That's Let's creepy. Well, Seriously. there's that. But then let's go to this to today. Which oh, this, is, oh, she's this. very into taking pictures of herself like that right now. This this disturbing picture. This disturbing picture. Yes, 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 yes. With those the saggies. <laughs> God. <laughs> deflated ah wolf very into taking pictures like this right now I just don't understand why and look i got a little b for beth because that's my name but she's bony she's really she's really she's really it's scrum. not it's, it's not a good look it's it's, concave she's yeah oh that's really not a good look that is not that is not a good look that's not sexy and you know what? Yes, there are some. There are many times where I can be jealous of somebody, uh, jealous of somebody I'd being like, slim and gorgeous and amazing at her age. And it's like, wow, how do you do that? But you know what? She's really fucking scrunning out. Yeah, I, I like I like a girl on a skinny side, but um, but that's no. Um, no, that that's as vile. I mean, it, it's literally sinew and bones. Not and that's not sexy. Yeah, but you know what? The more we talk about it, the more she loves that. Like she of loves course. the fact that she looks like this. It's, it looks disgusting. Even I guess dress, it's not sexy. Like, it's not sexy. Not, not sexy at all. Even her dress is kind of like loose on her. Like she's just not. Ugh. She's looking a little shitty, honestly. And you know what? Skinny is wonderful, but too skinny is really horrendous. Especially when you get old. There's that it's point bad. where you go over the edge. And all of a sudden you look like shit and it's just, it's just what happened to her. All right. So Billy Joel comes in and Billy Joel is with his wife, Alexis, not to be confused with Alexa. Ooh. All right. Jesus. Hold on. Let me just get to the bottom of this. Here's oh, look at this. Are, Miami is for lovers. What is it? D- DDLG. 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 I bet that's even the DDLG uh, uh, top. <laughs> oh, you realize they never kissed. That was that was, all they did was covered her hats over. I don't each other. know that I didn't kiss him. I don't. You don't know that. Oh, that that no way that mouth went anywhere near him. Look at us, look at us in Miami having the best. Oh, good okay. lord! You, you surf, those, surf with those soup in those stupid things. hats with those. St- you know, it's so funny to me. It's like, you know, I'm in Florida too. So is Dennis, right? Mm-hmm. And. It's not that fucking hot right now. Like it's no. not so no. oppressive that you need to be, you know, full coverage, stupid hat wearing, big glasses walking idiots. It really isn't. You know, it's, it's not. It's, it's not it's like, like that yet. It's like seventy five or seventy eight down in Miami at, Ish. at best. At best. Ish. Right Ish. Yeah, there was no kiss there. You're right. Then absolutely not. <laughs> Naturally not. Not even in the same location. <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty off. Yeah. And look at that. Look at that. Look at a sinew. Organic. Oh yeah, yeah. Look at a sinew around that neck. Oh my god. Oh. It's like a this is a great picture. Hold on to me. I bet that hair is attached. That hair has to be attached to a hat. <laughs> <laughs> That's why there's a strap on it to keep the hair hair from flying off. Look at that. Oh please! I I ate dinner. I 
it's gonna come back up. I'm all buttoned up. He missed a button. All buttoned up. Just oh my god, that's embarrassing. <laughs> and you know she's got she's got that fuzzy anorexic face. Yes, kind of looks like my Aunt Emma a little bit. My but she my Aunt Emma had a little better mustache. You see all that hair going? On? She's got like all peach fuzz face. Yeah, it needs a good Norelco. They'll get rid of that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> look at that loving couple. Look at that. It's the happy couple, my friends. Look at that. It's so, look at that smile. Wow. That's so, the happy couple. Wow. Look at that. Just so... uh, uh, It's frightening. Honestly, it's just, the penis it's, nose is really front and center. It's really disturbing. It's really disturbing. But yeah, it's okay. So that's it for Beth. Let me get out of here. So then he does his Billy Joel uh, interview. And um, yeah, there was a lot of commentary about, you know, I mean, just stupid questions. It just really is like an hour and a half of stupidness. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, God, it, it was just. He actually went back to like when he was four years old. And I'm just like, Jesus. I, I mean, the guy's 74. It, 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 no one cares. It, it, no, no one cares. And then he's like talking about, you know, when he goes into the studio and the other musicians would tell him things. He's like, you let people talk to you like that. And like, well, there are other musicians. Like Billy's even like, well, there are other musicians. Any, you know, they can talk to me like that because we're trying to make a record. Like it's, it's called collaboration. Yeah, it's like, um, wow. <laughs> oh, so, there's the Billy Troll Room. So Billy, well, I have a few. So Billy uh, is a big supporter of uh, Beth's rescue work. So at the end of the interview, Beth and his wife Alexis came in to talk about uh, just. And and I first of all want to thank Alexis and Billy so much because uh, they've been very very good friends to Beth and myself. <laughs> And supportive of my rescue work all yeah, these yeah. years. I can never forget how supportive you guys, both of you, were uh, around Beth's, uh, uh, you know, saving of animals. I know, Billy, you're a huge animal lover, and Alexis, you are too. Mm-hmm. And uh, you guys really stepped up because we got that whole wing of North Shore Animal League uh, built with your help. And That's a great place. Incredibly generous. And, and then for my 50th birthday, they gave, um, Billy and Alexis um, donated, and, and there's a room in my name, and there's so many lives being saved in that room. I just visited it last week. And t- oh, shut the fuck up. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's talk about this a little bit. So number one, let's go through the feline cancer ranch that is <laughs> – a, um, I mean, it's a huge wing where there's legitimately like three cats in every fucking room. Oh, yeah. Which is they, psychotic they- to me. Okay. Then, then on top of that, then on top of that, a state of the art healthcare facility. Like, seriously, I think I went in to get like my molars taken out. My, the place I was in wasn't even as nice. Oh, no. Uh, no, it. absolutely not. That Those, those are, um, those tables are heated. <laughs> Besides everything else, those tables are heated for the patient. Yeah. Those are expensive. Those are yes. probably about ten grand to uh, ten to twelve grand. A how piece. shocking! How shocking is it that Beth never brings her cats there? She goes to a place out in the Hamptons because it's closer. Never brings five thousand dollars sink quote state of the art facility where all these cats happen to reside. I, I drove by it. It's like a it's like a dead end fortress. Oh, it's you're, a dump. It's you're, a, you're not a, you're not allowed in to even see anything. No. It's, something's it's a, very weird about it. Huh? Wait, wait. So it's 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 an adoption place that you can't go into. That makes well, perfect it's, sense. Oh, it's never it's like a security guard. It's very weird, actually. No, you you are a thousand percent right. And uh, John and I have talked about this because it's um here hours and directions. This is like the fun part about it. Um, it's not friendly at all. Something's very weird there. I don't know what it is, but it's well. interesting. So the Alex and Elizabeth canine adoption center and Bianca's furry friends feline adoption center are open from 10 to six with no appointment needed, but the facility itself is not where like the whole place is not open. I remember we tried to go there and there was like several, you couldn't times. get in. Right. I think only- there's like six buildings. It's weird. It's very weird. It's a very weird scenario there. Let me see if I can get to uh, 
doesn't sure. really look like this. Well, you know, they they glam it up in on the website. I mean, it is actually just in a, like a shitty area, and well, it's in Port Washington. I mean, well, no, Port Washington is nice. It's actually, mm. I have a girlfriend who lives in Port Washington. You know, don't forget, Port Washington is adjacent to Sands Point, which is one of the wealthiest. Oh. Well, okay, yeah. But this is not in the night. Nice, oh my god. The entirety of Long Island. So that's insane. So, that's the castle that's over there, I think. Oh well, yes, but there's a lot of really, really wealthy uh well, look, they have a bunch of chimneys. How would we respect them? This is where they filmed um the Great Gatsby it was in Sands Point because there were so many homes there that were just kind of like ridiculous and amazing. Nonetheless, let's go back to uh Port Washington. Look at this. Nevertheless, let's go back. <laughs> Port Washington. Uh, I wanted to go and see if we could do North Shore Animal League. North. Here, let's see. Yeah, that's not in the good section. Yeah, it's off, also off of Main Street, right? Or Port Boulevard. Well, this is all new, if you recall. Yeah. Because I remember when I went there to do like some uh, recording. It's one of the pores that has to work and move the dogs. Yeah, it's not like the best neighborhood, honestly. No, that's what I said. <laughs> I mean, but that that neighborhood in general is very wealthy. I mean, even if you know, you say you know, oh, it, they it, are. Yes, no, yeah. it, you're right. It's generally upper. Even if it's a don, it's a you know, you live near the water in the shack. It's worth a lot of money. Yeah, it's just that's true. a nice that's a nice tow yard. It's upper middle. It's upper Does it let you go inside with the the Google? No, no they, I don't think they they probably didn't pay for it to do the inside uh, tour. No, of course not. But yeah, yeah. you're inside. It's like you're inside a castle because all the buildings are around you. Oh exactly. my god, it is. Right, it's like a fortress of solitude. It is a fortress. Now no, we, you can't you can't even go in the parking lot. No, can't go in the parking lot. All right, let's continue. Let's continue. Um, I do want to talk about Billy Joel for a fucking brief second. I, I love when they say things like Billy and his wife are very generous. His fucking wife is 33 years younger than him. She met him when she was 26 years old and he was almost 60. Okay. Okay. So, and shut up. 26. <laughs> it's, it's another Katie Lee. And, you know, they met at a restaurant in 2009. Here's the story. Look at them. Here's Is the Beth story. still a fr a friends with Katie Lee? Uh, that's a good question. Probably not because Billy is a friend of Howard's and Katie yeah. Lee is not. So I'm okay. trying to look in that picture. I'm trying to see if Sucker is written on there backwards. I mean, I'm sure it's coming up. Hold on. So they met at a restaurant in 2009 and they wed in 2015. She was pregnant. She was a month away from giving birth when they decided to get married. She oh definitely Christ. sucked him right the fuck in because she knew what a stupid alcoholic he was, allegedly. Oh, my God. Uh, while the couple have been together for over a decade, they preferred to keep their relationship private. Even their 2015 summer wedding was a surprise to family and friends. So that's what she looked like when they met. Okay? Mm. This is, that's, that's the look when they met. That's what she looks like now. Obviously, she's had some work done. She's spending Billy's money. <laughs> yeah. She was a big girl. And uh, he met her. He met her. Uh, they were each with a group of friends at a restaurant in Huntington, New York. Mm. Not being able to take his eyes off her, Joel went over and introduced himself. Mm -hmm. He left her table with her number. At the end of the meal, Joel called Roderick while he was still sitting across the room from her and asked her, if she could drive him home, clearly he was shit faced and decided this is a, so of course she wasn't interested in him because of course uh, it's really Joel, but sure. Uh, sure. Okay. I believe that one. Mm -hmm. She never, she's never heard one of his songs. She didn't know who he was. No, never this heard. Is Katie Lee. This is Katie Lee all over again. 2.0, 2.0. She <laughs> got pregnant and then she bagged him. Roderick is a former executive at Morgan Stanley, but you know what? She wasn't really an executive because as I was like digging into it, she, like, she worked on wall street, but she was no fucking executive. She was literally 26 years old when she met him. She was no executive. Well, you know, and here's what I love. They're so generous to us. It's like, who the fuck makes the money in that relationship? You, you Alexis, 
You? They. They are generous. Yeah, he counts the money. They're so generous. They're so generous to us. It's like, who's the generous one in this household? Who makes any of the money? Oh, look at her now. Who's the one that makes any money in this relationship? Oh, those poor Billy kids. They are. I know. It, it does remind me of The Shining. They are Joel's. Or Wednesday. Actually, they could. one of them could actually have. They could have played Wednesday. Wednesday, Jenna Ortega is 10,000 times more attractive than anyone. Well, I'm just saying that they, they, yeah. they fit the part. She looks like every single woman who yep. has married this kind of guy. Above her, above, yeah, above her pay grade. Yeah, above her pay grade. And Way above it. <laughs> The best money can buy. That's the absolutely best money can buy. That's what's going on here. So yeah, sure, sure. Let's thank them for all. Yeah, they are Mishka. I, I I didn't want to say that they are Mishka kids. <laughs> Mishka kids. <laughs> it's true. And let's also discuss the fact that she is younger than his daughter. Okay, <clears throat> she is younger than Alexa. Okay, Ooh, that's a little that's a little uncomfortable. Little, li little, little. The holidays blue. must be a little, little not on the comfortable side. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Gotta be a big shot. You're exactly right. Yes, real housewives material. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Who's that one? Who's that one who looks like her? Who's actually oh. had a lot of work done? She looks like shit right now. Um, she's um, been on Stern Show. The one that um, what's her name? Brandy. Brandy, 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 uh, Brandy, Glanville, Glanville. Yeah. Oh, she's a piece of work. Not far. Not near right. Not far. Just not far. better, better, bigger boobs. And bigger lips. And bigger yeah, everything, yeah. actually. She's oh. she really, she's really fucked herself up. Ooh, that's, oh, oh. She's had way, way too much but work. She was pretty to start with, though. I mean, she was actually fine. pretty. Yeah, see, not bad. No, it's yeah, a little work done there, but you know, still looks normal. All right, there we go. Yeah, yeah she's actually yeah, yeah. there. It is bingo version of Brandy Glanville. I am with you on that, my friend. So let's hear, <laughs> let's hear what the the trials and tribulations of being Alexa uh, Joel are. Let's Alexis, see. not Alexa. Oh, whatever. <laughs> way too confusing and right now we don't have a nanny Aww. and we kind of wanted to take a step back and just kind of be with our kids for a while we didn't realize we'd be traveling this much but um Ooh. yeah it's a struggle oh, every so day real. because you need help Ooh. you're traveling you're going different places and yet you want your kids to be grounded but do you guys find a question? lot of kids <laughs> want to get friendly in a really bad way with your kids so they can get to come over and meet billy and all of that the what kid knows Billy Joel? None. Oh, Zero. What That's kids your age knows who? I mean, the only reason you would know that they're Billy Joel's kids is because they are Mishkai kids. As, as, as was so, saying. you know, the thing is, listening to her talk, she sounds really irritated because she expected that she married Billy Joel and the amount of having to do mommy stuff would have been very minimalized. That is literally married, what's coming out of her mouth. Married an alcoholic and beget this child yep. out of wedlock. And he married her because she was a month away from giving. Yep. Yeah, I she's like, oh, we don't have any help. Like, she sounded really annoyed. Uh, you see any of that happening? Not really. No. No, I haven't hasn't yet. Been an issue yet. You know, it hasn't been an issue yet that people want to be friends with our kids because I'm so famous. That and and he's, he's asked that question multiple times to people it's all he cares about yeah i just want to make a note here hold on i love i love screen grabbing these pictures but give me a second here i just want to make note that billy joel literally has balls hanging off of his neck oh dear oh dear god and and, like and the left one does hang lower it wow does. um he he favors the left what's going on there Those um things. that's turkey More neck but very but trying to keep it from happening with surgeries. Apparently he sounded like shit during the entirety of the interview. And he was vaping. He was vaping. He, right. And that he, he stopped smoking. He went to cigars after cigars. He went to um, vaping and that's where he's at now. He's at vaping. So look how different she looks. Oh yeah. Almost. First off, look yeah. at this troll like man. I mean, 
Yeah. Yeah. First, first you write the yeah, music. Yeah, um, first you write the music, then you get the money, mm -hmm. then you get the women. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the way it goes. So yeah, so feel their pain. They don't have a nanny right now, and I'm feeling yeah. But she sounds that. irritated, like generally irritated. Yeah, yeah, it's not good. Oh, laundry room, absolutely. I know firsthand that he has been in many, many an accident. That Billy, <laughs> that's a that's cold laundry room, Sonny mm -hmm. Bono. <laughs> no, he screwed he screwed up his hands in motorcycle accidents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's run. He's 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 laid down a few bikes. He's serious. He's laid down a few bikes. So yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's let's wrap up the Billy Joel shit show and our final clip by uh, hold on, let me just get out of here. Uh, okay, so here's their big thing because uh, they were asked whether or not you know Beth and he will be going to any of the concerts. <laughs> this is at the end of the show. Billy Joel channel, then you take it away, then you bring it back. But I mean, uh, that's a lot of fun too. Have I hit everything? Anybody want to say anything, Alexis, Billy, anything? That's are you guys coming to a show before it's over uh, at the party? Yes, we are. Oh, good. Don't ask what's going on with don't that. Ask. Don't I don't, ask. I better not say anything. Not coming. I don't even know if you know about it, Billy. I don't. No, you don't? I don't either. No. Should I tell that? Blame Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon is a maniac. You know that. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> we know. <laughs> most talented maniac, but maniac. He calls me incessantly and says, we've got you and I meaning Jimmy and me, we have to go to Billy's final show and we're going to get up and we're going to do a Beatles song together. Okay, that's what's going on. That's what's going on. Are you serious? That's what's going on, my friends. Whenever that final concert is, I don't know when it is. I don't even care. I, I um, know. I, all I know is he's playing Tampa in a few weeks. So he is touring. He's touring because he's desperate for money. Mm. And he's yeah he's doing a show somewhere with Stevie Nicks and another one with um, Rod oh Stewart God. around Jesus. around the nation, and he, I think he's hundred, his hundred shows at MSG right. Yes, probably. All right, hang on, I got the tour dates up here. Let me let's take a look. Billy's played like Hard Days Nights. I'm sure that's what they'll play or something like that. See the twenty fourth, right. uh, February twenty fourth, Raymond James Stadium, uh, Arlington on March. See, it's going to be the ninth and then the twenty eighth. Madison Square Garden, San Diego in April, Madison Square Garden, Madison Square Garden, T-Mobile Park in Seattle in May. Madison Square June, Garden. June, July, 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 July. And then November at Allegiant Stadium. And then I guess, who knows? So that's a big one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16 shows for the entirety of the year. Is that really just that such an awful schedule? That's terrible. Oh. And but the thing is, so his final show is is in Las Vegas. So Howard would have to go to Las Vegas. I mean, because that's what he was saying. They're going to go to your final show. Mm. Mm. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know enough. Struggle is real. I don't know what Goiza Mess is talking about, but you can. Check. I don't know. I'm going to go. I'm going to go to RadioGunk.com. Uh, and find the hell out because yes. and so finally let's share this because uncle larry always comes with the with the receipts uh-oh <laughs> ratings didn't crack the top 150 cable shows on sunday <laughs> power of stern beefish the show did worse than a program on something called the cowboy channel <sighs> i have no words no you rated cable shows in the top 150 there we go. Uh, Operation Pet Rescue, some tournament, UP premiere movie, Love by Design, America's Day at the races. I don't even know what any of this shit is. So it's Sp a Spanish show. But look did. at the ratings on the right side. Yeah. Zero point. Well, why zero. does the, the Kitty Bowl or whatever it's called even exist? Uh, no, vanity it, project, vanity project. I, I wouldn't even be surprised if North Shore Animal League paid for that show to be on. You know what I mean? You know, yes. sometimes it's almost like a paid advertisement. It was. I wouldn't be surprised if, if that's what's going on there. Uh, because if they put on, you know, reruns of some, you know, the honeymooners, they'll make get more you know, ratings in a shed. All right, so let's go all the way down and let's see. All right, let me see what 
So I like that number one fifty is Antiques Roadshow, but United Kingdom. Yes. Okay. So number of viewers in the hundreds, hundred thousands, is that? Yes. Yes. So Antiques Roadshow UK, which is the last thing on this thing, fifty thousand. So it's forty three thousand. Forty three thousand watchers of that show. Wow. On Sunday. So she didn't even crack forty thousand people. Turkish um, league. Turkish league. Turkish I, league at eleven. Do you think anybody tells her the ratings? No. No. I can't understand them. <laughs> you know John Hine would be happily telling people what the ratings <laughs> were if they asked him, but nobody's asking him. Nobody cares what her her ratings are. <laughs> but Howard wants to badmouth, you know, Game of Thrones or something. You know, oh, they're oh. awful. You know, yeah, horrible shows. Yeah, but let's let's just <laughs> Halo and all this other stupid shit. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Thank you, Beth, for, for having like a phenomenal show for us to watch. And that is it. That is our Friday. That is uh mm. that is it for the show. So um he is on next week as I we know, that have, made me uh, sick. noted because he has John Cena on. And uh and yeah, we'll we will show the calendar again next week sometime. I'm not sometime. sure. Sometime. But sometime. But sometime. So I want to thank Mr. Judy Tenuta for Oh, thank you. I love you guys. I love you. Thanks. Thank thanks, you Mr. For Judy. Sharing. No, it's good to have you in. And you know, it's nice to have a different perspective on things every once in a while. So it's I I'm happy to have you on anytime you want to be on. And I, I love it. I love it. I love you guys. I know you're out uh out and about sitting in a hotel and you know being miserable. So it's it's fun to do this and kill some time. No, yes, no, he, though he may be off on Monday. It is President's Day and he usually no, he, I've looked in the historically he's, he he's, he's there, huh? He has not been off for, for President's oh, Day. Oh then he's gonna yeah, goddamn three day more days of misery. Yes, exactly. <gasps> and he, he said so, Do John Cena's coming in. I'm I'm sure he's watched Peacemaker, right? And Suicide Squad. Never. No. Never. No. What oh, is John Cena yeah. promoting? Because Peacemaker doesn't look like it's going to be back out until like late 24, early 25. He's in... Um, Barbie? Yeah, that's past. What else? He's got to have something else. Let me see. I swear I saw him... Let me look real quick. In something else. Uh, and there's, there's no car, there's no big car it's gonna be raining this weekend so there's no big car things i can go and like oh, john, john you really don't just just don't <laughs> mm. oh he oh he's in that well we've talked about this he's in that stupid uh movie argyle oh he's in that piece of garbage yeah. yes. Yes, yes oh my god yeah. jesus it's another one of those fantastic movies that got us isn't it too late to promote it at this point i think so it doesn't matter no, no one's gonna <laughs> see it yeah, let me see when it came out um, it premiered recently, as a matter of fact. It just uh, ten, not... ten, 10 days ago. Mm, let me see. Let 10 me, days ago. Let me see. February 1st, it came out. All right. Mm. That's two weeks old. Yeah, it's dead. It's dead. That's why he's coming in, I guess. <laughs> well, yeah, this is going to give it the big bounce. All right, Dennis, you got anything going on on DJ's Classic? Oh, uh, I got tons of stuff going on. Um, Yeah, so I have... Uh, I have worked on the carburetor for the Toronado. That video should be hopefully all edited because it's a lot. Um, tomorrow, I actually have a whole bunch of repair series. I'm doing with my charger with uh, reading spark plugs and then doing basic testing to figure something, you know, when you have an issue inside one of the cylinders and kind of doing a little like kind of play by play on how you should approach like issues like that so kind of yeah i go <laughs> like a cat all of a sudden so Italian. You're like, eh, I'm so, yeah well yeah um but <laughs> i can't sit on my hands now i can't talk um but no so yeah that, that's what i'm doing with that is that i have an issue and so i'm going to be going kind of step by step with the videos so if it's because stuff like this comes up with old cars and kind of give a uh kind of a perspective of where how you should approach it and <laughs> and, G, and and g canada see i did a video the first video is perfectly for g canada because i show my carburation is dead on baby it is as dead on as it could be exactly right so when is that coming out uh those should be 
Those are pretty short. They should be coming out over the weekend because it's going to be raining. So I'm going to have nothing to do. Same, same, yeah, bitch. same, same. Yet again, another rainy, <laughs> shitty weekend here in gorgeous, sunny Florida. Um, okay. So, yes. Thank you again, Judy. Love you so much. Thanks. Love you too. Happy Valentine's Day, Mo. Happy Valentine's Day to my friends out there. Mwah. And Dennis, I will... Talk to you some <laughs> time when you, you know, when whatever. And uh, we love you guys. And we will see you next time. Hey, guys. Thanks for hanging with us tonight. Please join us for any further discussion at RadioGunk.com in the forum section. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Radio Gunk. And don't forget to like this and subscribe to us and hit that little bell so you know when we're doing a new show. Thanks. <laughs>